There are a lot of misconceptions about what causes a winged scapula position and what that means for your body and movement and also what you can do to fix it. I want to break that down in this video today. A lot of people think that a winged scapula is reflective of weak muscles around the back side of the scapula and also tight muscles on the front side of the rib cage. So usually that means that your pecs are really tight and compressing your rib cage and pulling your scapula forward. And that is true to a certain extent, but I think that there's a big part of this equation that's missing. And that is the structure of which this whole scapula is gonna be sitting on in the first place, which is this rib cage right here. Now, this is what's important to take into consideration. Your rib cage is this structure that can move independently of your scapula. The way that you would be able to feel this is if you just stood up and just extended your back and flared your ribs. You're not moving through your scapula, you're moving through your rib cage and your scapula will change position because that is a secondary action to you moving through your rib cage first. Now, when we have a scapula that is winged out, you might have relatively elongated muscles on the back side of your scapula, sure. And you might have tight pecs, sure. But one thing that you will have is a rib cage in the back that is compressed and tight and it's pushing your rib cage away from your scapula. And so now your scapula is basically left in space and your ribs are now pushed forward. So hopefully you can see that right here. If I were to take my hand and push you from the back like that, your scapula would peel off and it would be stuck right here. And this can result in those aforementioned muscular positions. But I think a lot of people don't see success because they're not addressing the rib cage first. Now don't get me wrong, addressing these muscles is really important, but we can do that after we address the rib cage position. And this is where I think a lot of people don't get the optimal results that they're looking for. Now don't just take my word for it. There's a couple of measurements that are naturally going to be limited as a result of having a rib cage that is compressed in the back and the scapula can't move very well on it. The first one is going to be shoulder external rotation and a lower amount of flexion like this, right down by your side. What this represents is a arm moving off to the side and obviously external rotation. But my scapula needs to be able to move into a downwardly rotated position to accommodate for that happening. This is not going to be very possible or it's not going to be optimal if my scapula is off my rib cage and winged, which is more of a state of upward rotation relative to that position we need to get into, which is downward rotation. Another thing that's going to be limited is shoulder abduction because shoulder abduction also requires you, if I start here and then move off to the side, I need to move into more of this downwardly rotated position right here. And that's not gonna be very possible if I have a back rib cage that's compressed. You'll know you're cheating on either of these assessments if your whole body is moving with you when you're doing these assessments. It needs to be localized movement at the shoulder. And in the abduction test, you might have a little bit of rotation of your trunk, but your lower body should remain quiet. So you can use these two measurements to determine if you're making genuine progress, improving the ability to expand your back rib cage and get it in a better position. We can do this with the breath. And I'm going to show you a couple of exercises that are my favorites for getting this to work really well. If you like the approach I'm talking about in this video, you can check out my shoulder health program, which is designed for people that want to improve their posture and movement capabilities of their shoulder and feel better while doing it. Starts off easy and then we progress through three phases with exercises that almost everyone can do and modifications if you can't, and it has strength and mobility built within it. I'll link it down below in the description. We're gonna get in this seated position, obviously, but we have a step underneath Trevor because that's what's allowing him to keep his whole foot flat, but still get around a 90 degree bend at both his knees and his hips. So if your chair allows you to do that, great, stick with it. But regardless, you need to be able to feel your sit bones on both sides throughout the duration of this exercise. So those little bony protrusions in each butt cheek, make sure you're feeling relatively even contact with those while you go through this. We're gonna take that pillow, fold it in half so it's about that thick, which is what you want, and we're gonna wedge it in between our lowest ribs and the top of our thighs right there. And now what we're gonna do is take our arms over them, and we're going to get in this position where we have a bent elbow, palms facing us, 
and now we're going to reach and protract forward. So we are going to bend forward a little bit and that's okay because the goal of this exercise is to open up our backs. So holding that position right there, keeping your whole foot flat on both sides, feeling your sit bones a bit, we're going to exhale through our mouth. Nice and soft and long. And at the end of that exhale, sighing it out, we're gonna feel a little bit of side abs engage. And you're gonna slightly maintain that. The pillow is there to help you do that. And then softly and silently inhale through your nose for about five seconds, three to five seconds, depending on how comfortable you can be. And then exhale again. Keep working through that for about five breaths. Some things to keep in mind here is that we want our head to be in a neutral position. So it shouldn't be shoved far forward or retreated back. We want it to be that we're looking somewhat in between our hands straight ahead right there. And that will ensure we're in a pretty good neck position. And the other thing is that people, despite this being a flexion-based exercise, will want to sit up when they inhale. That's you trying to breathe into your belly and extend. So we're trying to get your back to relax. We're trying to open up your ribs in the back. So maintain that posture right there. It's actually a little bit better to be a little bit more slouched than extended. We can do other drills to open up your front ribs, but the purpose of this is to open up your back ribs. What we're gonna do here is get in a door frame or we can use a squat rack, whatever works, so that way we can hook our fingers completely around something nice and comfortably. So usually one of those two things is gonna be best here. We're gonna start in a parallel stance, hip width apart with the toes straight ahead, and we need to make sure that we get a thumbs down grip perfectly shoulder level, so not too high, not too low. Straight out from our shoulder, nice and relaxed straight arm. What we're gonna do now is take a slight step back with the right leg, just so the toes are in line with the heel on the front foot, and we're gonna stay heavy on the left foot. Now, we're going to round our back, flex our back. The lat extends our back, so we want to create length by rounding the entire back, even the low back, to a little posterior pelvic tilt. Okay, now this is the most important thing and this is where most people are gonna screw it up. Keeping that rounded back, just subtly turn into it, just a little bit and drop this left shoulder. Right there is all you need, all you need. And then you're gonna feel a nice but not overly intense stretch on that lat. And now you're gonna exhale through your mouth. Nice long sighing exhale, not but for five to 10 seconds and you're gonna feel those left side abs engage, or the opposite side of the side you're stretching because this side is more closed off now. Maintain that slight side ab engagement at the end of that exhale, and then close your mouth, inhale through your nose, and feel this stretch out even more. Five second silent inhale. So we're not trying to go really hard, we're just trying to ease our way into this. So again, very moderate lat stretch, Little bit of a turn, keeping the back rounded the whole time. Exhale nice and long for five to 10 seconds until you feel your side abs on the opposite side. Hold that, inhale through your nose silently. I should not hear you inhale, but I should hear you exhale. Okay, after we address this rib cage right here, now we can start to incorporate more musculature and start to get the scapula in a better position. So one thing that's going to be limited if I have a wing scapula is my ability to get my arm to move overhead effectively. This would be shoulder flexion because this requires me to keep my scapula against my rib cage as I move into upward rotation. If I'm limited in my ability to keep my scapula on my rib cage, I'm not gonna be able to do it, especially when I move my arm overhead. Because what needs to happen is musculature, like the low traps and the serratus anterior, need to keep my scapula up against my rib cage as it moves like this. So what we want to do is pattern the ability for these muscles to hold the scapula on the rib cage in higher amounts of shoulder elevation. And this would be a really good way for us to get better mechanics of the scapula gliding on the rib cage after we've improved the position of the rib cage. So here's one exercise I really like for doing that. Okay, for this one, you really don't need much other than a chair and a light band. Not a heavy band, but a light band, just like the other exercise I'm gonna show you. So you wanna take this band and you wanna wrap it around one arm. This is the side that you're not gonna work on. And you're going to scoot until you find your sit bones on both sides evenly. 
and you're gonna get not a ton of slack, but just a light amount, that's all you need. And you're gonna drop your shoulder on the side that you're going to be moving away from. And you're just going to extend this arm off to the side like this, keeping your head neutral. What people will do to screw this up is that they will dump way over here and then their head will come with them. All you need is just to feel your sit bone on this side a little bit more, drop the shoulder a little bit, and then just go here. What you're going to feel is the back side of your arm, your tricep, and on the back of your shoulder, your low trap engage. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth here for just about five breaths. Now again, make sure your head is straight ahead and you're not tilting your head like this. It's just a very subtle drop and you're not really shifting too much, but just that should allow you to feel this sit bone more. And by doing this, you're going to open up these ribs more on the side that you're working. As a sort of progression, what you can do is take that same light band and then put it down by your side. Get enough tension on it to where it's quite light, but you can get overhead with maybe about three to four out of 10 resistance. And then what you're gonna do is keep your knees in line with your hips and your feet. Take that band and just reach it down on the side you're gonna be moving away from, just a little bit. Doing that will help you engage a little bit of side abs on this side. Take this band, it's like you're drawing a sword out of a sheath to here. And then what you're gonna do is feel your tricep and low trap on this side right here. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth here, maintaining a little bit of side abs on this side right here. And also don't hyperextend your elbow. Keep a very, very soft bend. And finally, as I mentioned, it is important to address musculature on the back side of the rib cage. And I like to do that through exercises like chest supported rows, because what these do is this is an alternating movement. So I'm getting pumping of my rib cage and I'm not just compressing both sides of my scapula and my rib cage at the same time. Alternating movements will allow for you to get better rotation and better scapula on rib cage mechanics and gliding. So this can help solidify some of the progress we've already been making. And I like to do that to target the upper back by getting about a softball's length distance between my trunk and my arm right here as I pull back. This is going to target more of the muscles like the rhomboids in here. Whereas if I were to pull my elbow down low like this, this would be more lats. If you wanna maximize your progress with this, then I would recommend doing those first drills, those more breathing exercises for your rib cage, and also the banded exercises, both in the morning and at night for about three sets of five to 10 breath cycles. And then I would incorporate some of this strengthening like the alternating rows at least three times a week for about four to five sets of 10 to 12 reps.